Merthyr Tydfil, a town built upon iron and coal. For many, growing up in Merthyr can be difficult. With a lack of opportunities and investment in the town, boarded up shops and for sale signs are a far too familiar sight. And with a distinct lack of jobs in the area, many of the people who call Merthyr home struggle to live from one week to the next. When you grow up in Merthyr, you grow up tough. If the 1831 Merthyr uprising is anything to go by, it's hard to deny the people of Merthyr of their fighting spirit. And you'd need look nowhere else to witness this fighting spirit than in the boxing ring. Howard Winstone, Johnny Owen and Eddie Thomas are just a few of Merthyr's homegrown world champion boxers. In their day, they held the hopes of an entire town in their hands and walked into the ring with a dragon at their backs. Take a walk around the town and you can't help but be reminded of the mighty Merthyr boys. These statues forever a reminder of their astonishing legacies. Legacies that inspire the people of the valleys to pick up the boxing gloves even today. Like here at Dowless ABC, where sometimes the place is so busy the boxers have to share the same punching bag. The gym is run by head trainer Sean Jones, whose father Gerald was a training partner of one Howard Winstone. Boxing is a big thing in Merthyr. I think they look up to the older generation and they say, I want to be like that. And, you know, the same as their kids want to be football players. But in, in Merthyr, they seem to be boxing. We just do it for the benefit, you know, for the kids and just keep the kids off the street. It's great to see kids, you know, boxing and trying to make yourself better. And now we just, we just do it for the love of the sport. Like. Helping Sean with the day-to-day -day at the gym is Chris Collins. I am referee 27, 28 fights. Met all the boys, quite a few champions in my time. And then I had a, a nasty accident in the mines. But I went back to the gym and see, because Winston Howard came into the gym then. Of course, Howard then, he, uh, he had just come off because he had lost some of his fingers. And he hadn't boxed for a long time as an amateur. And, uh, well, of course, the history of Howard then was outstanding. Like, well, he was British champion, European champion. And, of course, in the end, he was world champion. There's such a following in the valleys with boxing. We are the only town in the world, right? we have got statues of three boxers. No one else got three statues like that. They do stand back, really. They see one of the mines, and they were hard men. Steelworks mine, they were hard men. It's not only the mines, the steelworks. And that, that, that used to be the thing in those days. And now, before my time, like that, but you were the bare knuckle fighting. And four times a year, they'd have uh, a fair. What do you call a horse fair? They were selling their horses, and sheep, and what have you. And then you'd be bare knuckle fighting there. And I think in the history of it, it's come down to the families and stuff, you know. As, as you can see with us, we had we, we got boys here, they're not in the box, but they come here to, come here to train. You know, and if, and if we if we had one or two tidy boys out of them, we'd be happy. It's clear to see that the passion for boxing is still much alive in Merthyr being passed down through generations, each generation further imbued with the fighting spirit of those who came before. A perfect example of such fighting spirit is 22-year-old Oban Elliott. Like many in Merthyr, Oban's first introduction to boxing was through his father, Paul. As a, as a young kid, my dad, he was insistent on, on you know, putting the gloves on me and stuff like that, because he was, he was an amateur boxer himself, you know, when he was my age. He almost forced us to do it, you know. He's not one of them dads who's like, oh, I'll support him, whatever he does. We have to be, you know, either a rugby player or, or a boxer. And, you know, I remember him giving me these little these little gloves with lace up. He was teaching me how to lace them up and stuff like that, you know. My elder brother, he was always, he was always you know, making sure he knew he was the bigger brother, you know, um, Lloyd. It was more, it was like, who was the alpha male out of me and my brother? And I was definitely not it growing up, you know. It was, it was a funny way of looking back on it, to be fair, seeing how it's all worked out. He was just like my little mate. He was just so, so quiet and good and friendly. And I don't know what happened. Uh... <laughs> he, my dad was pushing us to, to train and stuff like that. And, you know, we'd, we'd dig our heels when, when he'd drag us in, you know, and then my mother would take us out and we wouldn't want to go, you know. He'd take us to, like, a judo class and then, you know, taekwondo classes. We were doing all this different stuff. And then... Um... The transition was was after he after he died. I was I just turned seven years old when he when he passed away. When he took his own life. It just completely brought 
my entire entire world down when when he when he died. He went downhill big time after that, and I I'd basically had a like a breakdown. He was just constantly crying, outbursts, and you know, it was horrendous. I never thought he'd get through it. Like I thought, well, what would he have wanted? He would have wanted me to carry on. You know, but there's nothing more he would have wanted than me to be a fighter. Whilst growing up, Oban has steered more towards MMA as opposed to boxing. This is due to MMA being a combat sports format that includes not only boxing, but also the various other martial arts his father would take him to as a child. Now a professional mixed martial artist, Oban has gone undefeated in both amateur and professional bouts. Having never tasted defeat, Sky truly is the limit for the Welshman. Oban is swiftly moving up the Cage Warriors rankings with his eyes firmly set on becoming world champion. So make a statement. Never trust a gangster. But the journey to the top doesn't come without hard work. Yeah, when I'm not training, I'm I'm working full time, you know, labouring on a building site. It's not it's not pretty, it's not glamorous, but it's paying the bills and it means I can get to the gym every night on time. I've got to get up at five in the morning to go running before work. I'm back in the house at seven o'clock, shower, get changed, straight to work, work all day. And then I get in five o'clock in my work stuff, wash the dust out my hair in the shower, grab my bag, straight up the gym till eight o'clock every night. And that's Monday to Friday every day. It's just made me so mentally tough. I could have thousands in the bank that I could I could dip in and out of off sponsors or my family, you know, yeah, but boys are lucky like that. I'm not one of them, but I wouldn't change it for the world because in five years' time I'm gonna be I'm gonna have that mental edge on him. Oban trains at Shaw Mixed Martial Arts, a half hour away in Aberbeeg. Since upgrading to a much larger facility, Shaw MMA has become one of the highest quality training facilities in Europe. The gym boasts a wealth of world-class professional fighters, including multiple world champions. Sure, MMA, it's it's a family, you know. We're, we're all we're all mates. Without, whether we were fighters or not, we'd all get on in the pubs, you know. Everybody's equal there, you know, all, all the egos left at the door. I think that's why, you know, the team is so successful. The figurehead of the Shore MMA organization is Richard Shaw, known to the fighters at the gym as Shaky. I think we've seen a real a real rise in Welsh MMA. I think that's due to probably us being um, one of the more forgotten nations then, let's say, in Europe, you know. There's, there's no investment in the area, particularly from the South Wales Valleys, where a lot of these boys are coming from. A lot of the boys that we deal with are by nature aggressive lads. They, they're brought up in an environment where they've been struggling all their lives and fighting all their lives. So what we've done is, is taken that energy and put it into a positive fix. So we bring them here, we give them discipline, we give them standards, we, we try and build them as young men as well, not just as fighters. Richard runs the gym with the help of his son, Jack. Formerly the Cage Warriors bantamweight world champion, Jack has now moved on to the biggest MMA promotion on the planet, the UFC. When Jack isn't winning world titles and fighting at the highest level, you can find him at the gym teaching the kids' classes. It's, it's something for people to do as well, especially young kids. Our kids' classes are growing now. Get your kids into martial arts and, and it helps these young kids have a bit of direction in their life and also a bit of confidence in the sense of should they have to defend yourself, you know, they can. Much like Jack, Oban is looking to become Shore MMA's next Cage Warriors world champion. And if his record is anything to go by, he's definitely got the ability. Oban's one of these, one of these characters that um, he stands out because of his personality, but you know, he's very brash in front of the camera, he, he can sell it to the crowd, he's got a really big fan base now building with him. But more importantly, he's, he's got a fantastic approach in the gym, you know. He trains as hard as anybody, he's like a sponge, he's, he's constantly taking on information, absorbing it and, and putting it into practice on the, on the training mat. But his attitude is spot on, you know. And I, I really believe Oban has got all the skill set and the mindset to, to go on and represent Wales in the UFC. I think he'd be a big star in there as well, because I think the Americans would love him the way that uh, the way that he sells himself before, during and after fights. Who's on my hit list? Well, we've got the champion, Joy Herbert. We've got Mason Jones. We've got Donovan Desme. We've got the likes of Paddy Pimblett, Alexander Jakobsen. None of you are the best, but one of you is next. Alongside his winning personality, Oban also has a movement behind him. The whole Believe thing, it started out as as a laugh. It was, it was never meant to be a 
like a thing. We, me and yeah. me and my friends would all mess about saying believe about all, nothing to do with fighting, all kinds of stupid stuff. So then, as a laugh on a night out, we all just kept up saying to each other, believe like that, and dipping our head. And then at one point in time, I put my fist up and went, believe. And then everyone started laughing like that. And I'd done it on a couple of interviews and everyone, I just put hashtag believe on everything. Then everyone just put, oh, believe, believe, believe. And it just is just out of control now. I've believed in myself ever since I was a young kid that I'm going to get there. The fact, you know, I've got like this hashtag believe, it's, it literally, it couldn't, it couldn't fit anymore. To the uninitiated, MMA may seem like a reckless and dangerous sport. But with the rise in professionalism in the sport over the past decade, MMA is now one of the most regulated and controlled sports in the world. Fighters have to go through meticulous testing leading up to and after fights in order to compete, with various safeguards in place to protect the fighters. But even with all this in place, accidents can happen. I think in MMA, the, the number one thing, not just in MMA, but in life, you've got to be tough and resilient. That'll keep you going, because I've had loads of injuries and, you know, I broke my hand, I got, I got a lovely metal plate in my hand, I you know, broke my nose a few times. So, you know, you've got to be smart with it, but to keep going forward, you, I think you've got to be tough as well. My father, God bless him, um, you know, he was a, he was a boxer yeah, as when he was my age. Similar fighter to me, you know, comes forward swinging. As a father, I looked up to him, of course I did, you know. He, he was a loving and caring dad. You know, he was always he was always there for me, just like my mother was and is now. You've got Enzo Karzaghi and Joe Karzaghi. You've even got Richard Shaw, you've got Jack Shaw. It should have been Paul Elliott and Oban Elliott, and I'll never, ever get that back. Seeing what I'm doing now would have given him at least a life and he, he, he didn't get that far, you know? This is all really I've got. I can, you know, that's like my, that's like my dad in a piece of material, if, if that makes sense, you know? There's another one knocking about somewhere. They got made up straight after my dad died and that was like, you know, we all had them up. Me and my brother had them up in our rooms. Getting on 15 years old, this flag is now. You know, it's a symbol of him being out. He's in my corner every time, and he'll be in my corner right the way to, to the UFC belt. You know, I'm gonna, I wanna take my family name where it's never gone before. I want, I want people to realize how, how strong we all are, especially for what we've been through. I want people to f turn around and say, ah, oh, you know, look at Oban Elliott, look at him, look at what he's doing. Because it's unheard of in Murphy for people to succeed like that. And if I can do it, anybody can. I'm walking to that cage and I'm looking at everybody in the crowd and I'm looking at this guy in there who wants to take my head off. And people crumble under that pressure, but in my head, I've gone through so much in life, so many hard battles in life. So if I can overcome all of that, what is 15 minutes in a cage to me? <laughs>